Uh, hey guys, this is Tu. Uh, welcome to Fang Real Estate Show. We usually do this on Sunday, but today we're doing it on a weekday because why not? Uh, <laughs> and we have a very uh, a special uh, uh, a person today, and I'll introduce her in a little bit. Uh, today, our discussion uh, is going to be about the City of St. Paul's proposed ordinance, uh, whether you know the pros and cons for that, whether that's good or bad. Uh, I think a lot of the city councils or the representatives that you know we put uh, to represent us, I think they have good intentions, but doesn't mean every regulation is good. Uh, and then we'll discuss that. Um, but before we and uh, you know, not everybody's from St. Paul. Um, however, these ordinates are you know kind of becoming sort of a, a a topic throughout the United States. So it's going to affect everybody. I know it happens uh, with a, a couple of cities uh, in my hometown, uh, well, in the town that, in the state that I used to live in, California. So, um, you know, these, these ordinates are coming and it's going to affect everybody, uh, all of us real estate investors and upcoming investors and tenants and our community members. Um, so, you know, uh, let us know what comments you guys have and we'll get, we'll get started, okay? And of course, as always, uh, I'll probably put this on face uh, on YouTube, um, and we we're going to uh, leave some times at the end to um, uh, answer any questions or comments that you guys have. Okay. Uh, with that said, uh, uh, Sandy, why don't you do a thirty-second introduction of yourself, who you are, and you know, you you are a real estate investor. So why you get in, how and why you get into real estate in the first place? Yeah, thanks for asking. Um, so my name is Sandy Kimua, and um, previous to real estate, um, managing real estate properties, um, I had about a 20-year career in the professional performing arts, uh, in theater, commercial, print work. Um, and then I also had a career in community organizing, specifically working around racial equity, uh, voter engagement, um, and um, I've also worked in government uh, community relations. And so I'm kind of in a, I think a really unique and helpful yeah. position because I actually used to deal with problem properties in North Minneapolis, uh -huh. um, talking to renters about their rights. Yeah. Um, and so for me, I can see both sides, uh, you know, on the small business and, and real estate side, and then also how govern government works, how elected officials think and how yeah. they work the culture um, and the politics around that. Yeah. Uh, and then also how direct service uh, nonprofits work, especially around racial equity. Wow. Um, so you, you yeah. when you did the community, are you still doing community organization work or? or um, I don't or? Uh, professionally anymore. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I still could, but um, you know, the reason why I got into real estate investing is because four years ago, I d got diagnosed with um, a permanent, incurable untreatable neuroimmune um, disease uh -huh. so this disease this is a chronic illness it's a it's a disability uh -huh. um, and so I uh, it gave me a lot of challenges where I was often he home homebound or bedbound uh -huh. where I wasn't able to move um, where I had a lot of co cognitive challenges so I just want to say that part of my condition is that sometimes um, I will skip words or, or, or hesitate. And so uh -huh. it's not because I'm nervous. It's just because I have some, um, uh, part of my illness is I have some cognitive delays. Yeah. Um, so uh, be because of my illness, I was, I had to leave my job. Uh -huh. um, and so if you can imagine somebody who is really a, establishing a pro professional identity, um, somebody who, you know, is in her early mid thirties and <coughs> getting, really hitting her stride career-wise, and then just being completely stopped by, by, by this illness. And so I was forced to um, figure out what, I, what am I gonna do? Am I going to apply for disability or whatnot? And so um, real estate is one of the only, th the only, really the only option I had aside from applying for government ben benefits. Yeah. Um, my, my partner, um, this is quite personal to me, you know, my, um, my, my partner, his parents passed away, 
uh-huh. both from both from cancer. So I spent three years caregiving, and it was because of the fact that they had invested so much of their 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 earnings into um, investments and to a life insurance policy that we um, had some money to use as a modest down payment towards some rental properties. Yeah. Um, so this is why I'm here. And it's not because, um, I mean, a lot of it is because out of sheer necessity, mm-hmm. um, because otherwise I, I wouldn't know what I would do. Um, another thing too, is that, um, uh, how do I say this? Um, my family, I come from, you know, my family here in St. Paul, my parents have been investing in, in uh, mainly in rental properties for the last 20 to 25 years. Um, and my partner, uh, when he he's from Connecticut originally, and his family had also invested in rental properties. And so we both grew up being exposed to managing properties. We, you know, looked at lease agreements, dealt with the city, did cleaning, all the move in and move out uh, prep work. And so, um, and so, yeah, so I'm, in, I'm at the table with the type of unique experience that I have and um, the, uh, the challenges that I, I faced that led me here. Oh, well, I thought I had a rough time. <laughs> so <laughs> as I talking to you, I'm like, wow, uh, uh, you know, I, I mean, I met you, I think, like uh, three, four weeks, you know, two, yeah. three weeks ago. Yeah, and I was just like, I was kind of blown away, I, I, uh, you know, about your story and stuff. Um, but... I mean, you have family that invested in real estate before, so why not go direct to real estate? Why do the community part? What, 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 what was it about like helping the community that like started you on that additional path anyways? Oh, um, that's a good question. Um, I realize nobody's ever, uh... yeah. sorry. Yeah, it's okay. A- a- asked me that question before. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, my father, I grew up, uh, I grew up um, actually being surrounded by politicians. So mm-hmm. I met Nakuma uh, Paul, General Wang Pao, yeah, yeah. when I was like four, because mm-hmm. they, he came to my house a lot. So yeah. I actually remember meeting him, you know, around that age. And I remember I didn't know who he was. <laughs> I was just a kid. I, I didn't yeah, know. Yeah. But um, I thought it was normal mm-hmm. for I thought it was normal for every person to have General Wang Pao visit visit your house on a regular mm-hmm. basis so I grew up being around uh, surrounded you know uh, being a, having met him yeah. um, my father was very um, active in the, the, the Hmong community um, internationally and then you know in Minnesota my father was one of the founding members of Lao family um, uh-huh. the first communities uh, nonprofit here in Minnesota established by Hmong and Lao people for Hmong and Lao people yeah. so he was a founding member Um, In the 80s, um, in the early 90s, my father did a lot of community organizing around um, talking to the state around the injustices that were happening to Hmong people, especially in regards to the yellow um, chemical rains. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I grew up seeing my father being a a community organizer. Um, I was the the kid who stapled all the packets together. Uh And, you know, when he wrote letters in English, I did, uh, you know, I did all the spell checking. Yeah. I grew up, you know, going to c- 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 uh, city events where, you know, I danced with, uh, you know, the former mayors, you know, Labung, Labung, Blah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when, so I, I grew up just in a, I, as I grow, as I get older, I realized I grew up in a very, even as a Hmong person, I grew up in a very interesting um, household. I thought it was normal to phone bank and I thought it was normal to talk about petitions. Yeah. And so that's, you know, as so I really was influenced by my, my father. And then also, um, you know, I have some mentors. Shout out to Sai Ta. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's in Florida now. Yeah, <laughs> he, just, yeah but yeah. Sai, I met Sai when I was 16 and he was an artist. Yeah. And he oh, was yeah, yeah, yeah. organizing. Yeah. So I was really influenced by Sai and some of my older me- uh, mentors. Uh-huh. And so I don't consider myself new to any or- organizing. I think I'm, uh, they are, you know, my father was a pioneer. Sai and them are the second generation. Mm-hmm. I think I'm the third generation. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm 39 and yeah. there's a whole new generation. Um, it's just that maybe the new generation doesn't know because we didn't have Facebook. We didn't have uh you know, we didn't have the type of technology we have nowadays to document, but I I started organizing um, when I was around 20. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, so that's, that's kind of how I started. Yeah. Yeah. So then you kind of, at that time, did you kind of see yourself continuing, uh, you know, that, that community organization path, or did you always knew that maybe you're going to come to real estate? 
Or before, um, you know, I, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I always knew that I, I would at least buy, you know, one or two rental properties because, uh -huh. um, you know, I really respect my mom because she only had a GD and by the time she was 20, she had four kids. Yeah. And um, she was really the one who started everything. And um, I was going to say, and so I knew that, you know, when I, by the time I was 13 or 14, she didn't have to work a nine to five job. Yeah. Her job was managing properties. And so it gave me the incredible luxury of having my mom being able to go to every single school event that I had, oh, being yeah. able to pick us up and drop us off and have a flexible schedule. And so I knew that that was the kind of lifestyle that I wanted for myself if I were to, um, you know, choose to get married and choose, choose to adopt or, or have children. Um, yeah. So yeah, so I really knew that, but, but because of my um, uh, illness, it really forced every uh, it really forced me to 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 have to go into this um yeah yeah much more to pursue it yeah much more um yeah so i think that's very powerful what your mom i mean what you saw and what your mom did you know because that that's that's what flexibility is what real estate allowed us to do yes you know uh and so that's great that you you saw that at a young age um so let's go to one of the, maybe your first deal. I mean, this is what I usually ask, just to kind of see how you guys got started. Uh, so I guess your dad had like $5 million and he gave it all to you. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, no, so really, what, no, what, no. how did, yeah. Uh, uh, you sort of talk about it a little bit at the beginning about some insurance stuff, but how did you get started? What, what was your first deal? Sure. Um, I actually, first deal was, uh, uh, just to be clear, my, my partner owns the properties. Yeah. And I am a leasing manager. And so yeah. uh, we are in many ways um, business partners. Yeah. Um, but uh, back in the, the, you know, when the market crashed, um, I had been kind of watching and waiting because I had seen my parents go through these kind of crashes in the 90s, right? Yeah. So while everybody was buying everything at really high prices in 2006, I was yeah. just kind of watching it because I knew it was chilling. And so when it really, you know, there was a huge crash, um, Originally, I was going to buy properties, but then my uh, I, I left my job, so then my partner was in a position too. So, um, we hired an agent mm -hmm. who ha had who was also an investor and also a property owner, and yeah. so that was exceptionally helpful because she was very realistic with us. Mm -hmm. um, and the first property that we bought, uh, or that my partner bought, and he has four right now, and so yeah. the first property was um, in the fall almost winter of 2010. And this was a category two property in St. Paul. It was a yeah. fourplex. Yeah. And um, it wasn't even on the MLS. It was on the city website. That's how yeah. crazy it was. Yeah, yeah. So nobody knew about it. Nobody was putting an offer in. And um, we did, and they accepted it. And uh, we didn't know what we were doing. We thought we knew so much because we had helped our parents. Yeah. But it's so different to be the, your own yeah right. Yeah, right it's different so, when you actually jump yeah, in we didn't know anything you know we're like, you can do it you know to be to be young and to be young and young and, and optimistic yeah. right and so um you know it took us about uh we got accepted and then we had gotten some money kind of put in with a mortgage I, i'm not a real estate agent or a yeah. lender so i don't know the right term but it was like a two or three something loan so yeah. the, the money that was earmarked for construction was wrapped up with that mortgage. Oh. Oh, it's two or three K loan. Yeah, two or three. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I started two with that. Yeah, Thank FHA you. two or three K loan. So that's good. Yeah. You started like yeah. how I did. <laughs> but but this is a kicker. So my partner, um, we didn't understand that we only have six months to get the building um, renovated. Yeah. So here we are taking our time, and because he was in charge of looking at the the, the deadlines, and I was in charge of finding contractors, we didn't we didn't double check right. And so we missed the deadline. And so the lender thought, oh, they don't need that money anymore. So they took that 40000 away. Oh. And we were like, oh, my gosh, we have no money um, to oh. fix anything. And so um, my partner, then for his job, he got, um, he was traveling for almost a year. So oh. I, I didn't see him for almost a year off and on. And so we weren't able to get the building done. And um, we were able to get extend, uh, what is it, extensions and stuff yeah. from the city. But we finally got it done and um, moved in, I think, June of 2013. And yeah. that's when we started renting it. And so, um, you know, that building, and I just want to say this to everybody, this is like the chupacabra. So I don't want to set people up for disappointment. But it was about one, a little under 120 for the building. Mm -hmm. We put in about 35 to 40. 
um, you know, there's, you know, holding costs, right? Yeah, Paying the yeah. mortgage while yeah. it's unoccupied and et cetera. Uh, but now, because this fourplex is actually in a neighborhood of other fourplexes that a developer built at one time, uh -huh. uh, we have a lot of comps. And so a similar, uh, an exact building, just about maybe, uh, maybe half a block away, yeah. same layout, same everything, sold for about 360 about a year and a half ago yeah. and so you know we built tons of equity in in this fourplex and um i have to say the interesting thing is when we saw this building um i had said to him let's let's buy a duplex and then we saw this i'm like let's buy this one yeah. and i said to him you know you never know if one of us gets sick what if one of us gets sick or if we don't get sick and we were to, you know, have a child together, we need to be able to pay for childcare. Yeah. And so I think that, um, you know, I am not the smartest person, <laughs> but I think that was the best thought that I ever had. Yeah, and I was yeah. kind of joking at that time because I was never ill. I was, I never got sick. I was a workaholic. I worked 60 hour weeks and yeah. I could just drink coffee all day and I'd be fine. Yeah. Like one time for my job, I slept for only 45 minutes. Yeah. Literally, oh, I slept wow. for 45 minutes and I got up and went to a 7 a.m. radio interview. So yeah. I was a very, like, very strong person. And so, um, so yeah, so it was odd that I said to him, what if one of us gets sick someday? Yeah. And so it was a blessing that when I got ill, the fact that we made money from this, it covered my minimum expenses. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and so I tell people all the time, you know, I'm not telling people they have to, you know, be a millionaire, but if they can set a goal for themselves to say, I just need this to cover diapers. Yeah, I need this yeah. to cover, right? I need to, yeah, yeah. I need this to do my, my, my vacation fund. And then I think that, that that's a success, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because of the fourplex that, uh, you know, my wife and I bought, you know, yeah. my, uh, now that we have kids, she was able to, you know, work from home because yeah. it our, our minimum expenses already. And so yeah. I don't have to worry so much. Um, but, but that's great because you took a category two home, which in St. Paul are, are homes that, you know, the city deem uh, uh, need, uh, uh, they have coal compliance issue, right? Yeah, and they can empty for at least two years or longer. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, that, so that's the thing about us investors. It's like, uh, I was, before I was, talking, I was talking to some friends about these vulture uh, investors that came and buy all the properties at really low, prices when the market crash but at the same time you need people to purchase these mm -hmm. properties because if yeah. the market crashes you don't have these people that's a bad name by the way vulture uh, investors yeah. but <laughs> but if you don't have the investors coming in to put the money back into the neighborhood you know mm -hmm. then you're gonna end up having like a detroit or, or not detroit uh yeah detroit right just having just having a really yeah, rundown neighborhood it. right yeah, having yeah a exactly. neighborhood that's not livable that's not friendly yeah um, and and you know, I, I this is my thing. You know, I um, politically, I, I was part of the DFL for a long time, but I uh -huh. think the last couple of years I've become a lot more moderate. And so I don't really identify with any party right now. But what I support is having a, a healthy, having a healthy e ecosystem, right? Yeah, yeah. You can't just say I'm going to kill all the hyenas, or I'm going to kill yeah. all the vultures, or I'm going to you know i'm going to control the deer population that yeah. we need to have a healthy competition yeah. and a check and balances to to thrive and so yeah. i always say for every type of house or every type of investors there's every type of house yeah. um it's just a matter of um uh of being able to give people that that opportunity i mean yeah, yeah. i've seen so many houses and i want to let you know i don't believe in in com i don't compete against anybody else yeah, yeah. Because I, I don't believe in that. I believe in abundance. Um, yeah. I believe that when I see it, I've seen some houses where I see the house and I'm like, I'm not in love with it. I have no joy fixing this. And I actually send it to other investors to say, yeah. I think you would really like to fix this house. Because yeah. I'd rather have people, um, for me, if I got all the pie and, no, and you guys didn't get any, that says a lot about me. Yeah. But if we all get a piece of the pie, and I know that you guys are, we're all able, no matter who we are, we're in a position to be able to provide for our, our, our partners and our children. Yeah. Then, then that gives me peace of mind. You know, I'd rather earn uh, less, but be comfortable than yeah. earn everything and know that somebody went, somebody, you know, under my control, I let somebody 
be homeless. I, I don't, yeah. I don't think I can live with that. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's that mindset of scarcity versus abundance, right? Exactly. And, uh, you know, that's why we do this show, because I think, you know, we, there's plenty of businesses out there. Uh, and, you know, the truth is, when I look around our community, there's all these houses that need to be fixed. And yes. someone has to do that work. And so exactly. as investors, like what you did with your house, that property needed to be fixed. You came in. Yeah, you guys took the risk to fix it. You put you you created two hundred thousand dollars in equity, and now the property has you know um, the tenants in there, uh, and and the 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 rent. I mean the taxes went up for the property because you guys. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the property went up. Yeah. went up, and um, you know, it's one of my my frustrations. But what I do want to say too is that um, like many like many um what I call housing providers, right? Because we yeah. are a housing provider. We provide yeah. housing. Like many housing providers that the city does not know about is that we, um, I think that we work, we do our very best to work with, with, with renters. Uh -huh. um, and that for me, um, me being, having been on the direct service side and knowing the clients that I served who were experiencing homelessness, who had, didn't, you know, had, had, were unbanked, which means yeah. they don't have any bank account anywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of our own people yeah. fall under that category. Yeah, exactly. We're yeah. unbanked, right? So the yeah. we're unbanked, we are setting ourselves up for financial failure. And so for me, knowing that 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 I had clients out there who I served, I wanted to make sure that my housing requirements, my screening requirements, were as equitable as possible. Yeah. And I always, and I think a lot of the message that I'm telling the city is that if I choose to to accept somebody who has an eviction, right? Yeah. Somebody who has a UD, somebody who um, they had a a, a, a felony yeah. over ten years ago, or, or whatever I choose, or someone who has a zero credit score, yeah. right? So let's let's go let's that go there. Let's let's cool. actually uh, yeah. let's actually go to the city ordinance because that's yeah. kind of our topic here. I just yeah. wanted to relay that you know uh, you've been you've been sort of on both sides of the spectrum because you're you're on the community organization side. And then now you're on the investor side, you know, being a yeah. landlord now, right? Yes. Uh, and then I, I'm assuming you also change toilets and, and clean carpets like us. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I, carpet, <laughs> I install drywall. Um, I paint. That's fun, right? I do. Yeah. I mean, I look like this, but that's, <laughs> most days I don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, think, do, do, yeah, we okay, do everything. So, We've done everything. Yeah, so what are the ordinance that the city of St. Paul is proposing? And, sure. and, and you know, maybe uh, you could kind of shed light on whether they're going to be good for uh, mm -hmm. landlords and tenants alike or not. Sure. Um, let me give you a little, let me give you a little. Yeah. Or, or, or give a background. background. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll give a little background. So um, <clears throat> this is what we understand from the city's Office of Financial Empowerment. Um, under the last mayor, not this current mayor, um, who's only been in office for a year or so, under the last mayor, there was a charge to look at affordable housing. Mm -hmm. And um, under that directive, I believe in 2017, there was a working group formed. This working group at that time, um, and I can try to find out more details from the office, but this working group was comprised of several nonprofits, um, I think several let's just say several stakeholders who, yeah. you know, they, they have different competing self-interest, but they, they're, well, they have interest around uh, affordable housing. Yeah. And so this working group then led to uh, the charge to have 11 community sessions uh, last year. Yeah. And the results from that community session, they put it into report. And um, I understand the city was speaking to a number of, what I would call social justice um, organizations who have a particular um, um, interest and concern around racial equity um, uh -oh. uh, work and affordable housing. And so um, they put together this, this community report. Um, and while they were putting this together, this community report, this is when there's two kind of two things that are working in, in, in tandem. Yeah. Is when they put together these, these that, that's when the proposed ordinances started to, to come up. Uh -huh. um, and um, so is the uh, ordinance based on the report 
you know, they, I, I think it is. I mean, a lot of the, what I understand is that um, a lot of the nonprofits, the advocacy groups, you know, gave feedback um, that I think led to this ordinance. But what I can say too is that this ordinance is a lot of what Minneapolis set forth. And I think, and, and I might be uh, incorrect, uh, there's a lot of other people out there who are experts on this, but what I understand is that the Minneapolis ordinances are also based on other cities, city or um, ordinances. Uh -huh. so, the in, yeah, so the interesting thing is, they're laying, for example, um, let's say Seattle, yeah. and then Washington, and then Minneapolis, and they're, they're, they're copying ordinances, but I don't think they made a very thorough analysis of the, our, our, of the differences in our city. Yeah. Um, and so um, there, the, the office's reasoning was that, well, these cities have these ordinances. Um, we are a mid-sized metropolitan area. We have housing issues. We should have these ordinances too. Yeah. Um, so that's where they're at. Are, are, are supposed to, uh, uh, um, you know, are supposed to help the community, right? In terms of housing. That's the aim anyways. Yeah, their aim, you know, I call it apples and oranges, right? Yeah. Apples versus or, or oranges. And I say this because, so that for me, I want to make sure not to create like a adversarial relationship because yeah. it can go that way. You know, it's easy for me to say, the city sucks, I hate the city. Or they can yeah. say, owners suck, you know, right? Yeah. But we go that way, it's never going to work. Yeah. Um, it's never going to get anywhere. But so it's apples and oranges. So what I, what I mean by that, is that the housing advocates, I, I understand where they're coming from. There is a real challenge for um, certain renters who have had multiple evictions, who have a criminal history background, et cetera, et cetera. And there isn't enough uh, um, housing around. I mean, there's a very, very, very low vacancy, vacancy rate of less than, less than, I believe, 2%. Yeah, yeah, I, I noticed right? that. Yep. Right. Yep. Yep. And so there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of demand, not a lot of supply. Mm -hmm. And so for them, they're, 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 it seems to me their intention is that we want to get these people housed because it's about quality of life. And um, they also talk a lot about racial justice. So they're saying that, and this is what Councilmember Tao's aide said, said to us in a meeting the other day, is that a lot of folks who um, are people of color but who are not Asian American, right? She said black and brown. That's what she said, uh -huh, black and yeah. brown folks, which I understand to be uh, black and Latino folks. Um, That's okay, other are, ethnic groups, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they are yeah. being disproportionately uh, incarcerated, which yeah. I get it, there's facts to back that up. But yeah. what she, they don't get is that they think that, they don't realize that they're punishing us. And my argument is that one, I am not the police chief. Two, I am not a judge. Yeah. If they want to tackle that, um, they need to look at judges and how judges have just have inequitably um, punished a lot of young men of color, particularly young black men, yeah. uh, compared to their white counterparts. So they need to get that at us, uh, yeah. get 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 at the judge, not at us. Yeah. And so that they, that's that's their apple. Our orange is that. We are running a small business, right? We are uh -huh. looking at our risk assessment, or we're making risk assessments. We're dealing with code compliance. And it's something that they have no idea. You know, they have no real world knowledge of. It's conceptual and yeah. it's anecdotal because they're hearing the What's, story from certain renters, not directly from us yeah. or not enough of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think there's some public officials that are also landlords, but I don't think it's that many. So I, I think the representation is not, uh, it's not, and, and I'll tell you why. In in the community report that um that we broke down, yeah, in the in the community report, they had like I said, eleven community sessions. Where were we? That's because they did not advertise on Facebook. They didn't. They even they didn't even advertise to the twenty plus ethnically specific, culturally, racially, language specific, um, me media entities here. Um, and Wait, are we talking about the same report? Is it the Fair Housing Conveyance? Tenant protection that came out August 2019. Uh, it's a, does it say? Can you show me what it looks like? So oh, I can. Like I put in black and white. Yes, that one. Well, yeah. this one, there's only yeah. 98 individuals and, that participated. Exactly, exactly. So if you break it down, right? I believe out of the ward hosted community sessions, okay? Yeah. Out of the people who attended, only five are property owners, who I call mom and papa folks like us. Yeah. So 
I'm for me coming from a community engagement background who I've been a part of creating these types of reports. Yeah. Were I to do this or were somebody on my team to do this, I would say this is not an adequate sample size. Yeah. You have yep. to go back to the drawing board. And anybody who's ever done any community engagement would say the same thing. Also, the fact that when they collected data, they did not collect uniform data, demographic data, trying to see who was a renter, right? Who was a property owner, who is whatever, whatever. They didn't do that uniformly. So they are actually having one, inadequate data, mm -hmm. two, an adequate sample size. Okay. And that would never suffice in any community report, any type, yeah. And so, you know, they're, they're, they're painting the narrative that they have engaged with property owners, but they, they haven't. And I think that it's a, an, it's a well-intentioned, but inaccurate narrative. Yeah, uh, to me, I'm just a plot to, to uh, uh, a pause. Uh, to give context, we have about 300,000 uh, res, uh, uh, our population is around 300 plus thousand, I think 340 or 350,000 mm -hmm. uh, residents in St. Paul. So to, to get 98 people, I, I, yeah, to me, I'm a math person, so, or, or my, my formal education was in, was in mathematics, so. To me, yeah. that, that's not a great sample size. Exactly, right? Like bingo, right? Yeah. I suck at math, and I already know. Like, are you serious, <laughs> right? I mean, yes. look at the fact that in less than in less than four weeks, right? In less yeah. than three weeks, we were able to get um over four hundred people to yeah. be part of this this group. I mean, yeah. can you imagine? I'm telling the city, can you imagine the richness and the 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 diverse amount of expertise knowledge that if they had reached out to us early on we could yeah. have given them but they didn't yeah. so the first issue is that maybe this study is not adequate it's not a fair representation of our community it's, it's not and and we have stressed that yeah. but council member Jalali made it very clear to to me um, and to a group of folks from the multi-housing association you know the big wigs right i mean they are the big dogs you know like which they, they were cited in this study yeah and uh, actually you know they told her and yeah. I was there. They said, you misrepresented us. Oh, okay. So even they feel that their presence, that, 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 that they are misportrayed because oh. uh, they have shared with me, shared with us that their property staff, um, their, their folks who came to um, um, one of the meetings yeah. had echoed our very same concerns, and yet they were ignored. Yeah, and so yeah. this, this report, um, it's driven by the city's narrative. Yeah. It's not, and it's not an accurate, uh, it's not an accurate, um, accurate um, point of view at all. Yeah, yeah. Well, the sample size is not there. Uh, I think they no, misrepresented. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I, yeah, <laughs> I don't, I mean, uh, yeah, that's not, that's not, th to me, that doesn't work. Uh, no, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think but, more but, studies need to be done with that. But yeah. what are the proposed ordinances now that they, they uh, yeah. put in place? So, so uh, sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll let me say one thing. Real quick. So we, we, we had asked him to go back to the drawing board. Yeah. Like one of our members said, can you please put the pause on this? And they had made it very clear uh, that the train has left the station and they are moving forward with these proposed ordinances. So they don't really, basically, they don't care yeah. about the fact that this report is not accurate. So, well, with that so when said, you say they, who's they? They are the city council members. City council members so, in St. Paul. Yeah, 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 yeah. They they don't care, and um, we actually got a draft of the proposed ordinances before some of they so some of them did, oh. and that's amazing to me. Yes. So these we guys, thought, these 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 city mm -hmm. council members are elected officials, right? That that the com yes. that our community and our districts elect. So it they they supposed to be a representation of what our communities want. Well, is that, well, is that a fair assessment of a community? Um, of a ideally, member? right? Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I, I can, if this helps, uh, just based on my voter ed work, and I've done field fields um, campaign coordinating for an elected official uh -huh. when she was running for state rep. Um, I don't mean to be a Debbie Downer, but I'm going to be, <laughs> which is this. So you're going to tell the truth to me. Yeah. Because I, I, I always I, thought that I elected them, and so their representation of me and my neighbors. So, so no, they're so so, and I, I've done, I trained, I've trained um, women to run for office, uh -huh. and I've been trained to run for office or to be a part of a team of running for office. Yeah. So this is the deal, and I'd say really quickly, 
The candidate is the hamburger. Okay. Uh -huh. You as a campaign manager, you are serving the hamburger. So, 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 so the campaign team is, 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 is expertise is to shape the candidate. Yeah. So the candidate has to be the most attractive burger, right? Yeah. It has to be the most attractive product. And not to say that the candidate is lying, but to say that the candidate has to create a campaign with a very succinct catchphrase. So for you to want to vote for that person. Yeah. So, for example, if I'm a candidate and I have never owned a property and I live with my mom and dad, okay, uh -huh. all right, and I'm a renter and, and I'm thinking, oh, man, 51% of folks here are renters, what do you think do I need to say to let me win? Do I say, hey, renters, let me talk about stuff that bothers you, right? Yeah. Or, or do I say, hey, housing providers? Let me uh, talk about the issues that bother you, right? If I have never bought, rented my own house or rented a place, I don't even know what a lease agreement is. Let's say I don't. And I'm living with my mama. Yeah. Right? So, so my thing is this. Any candidate, and it's not to say that they're fake or they're bad people or anything like that, but candidates, we vote because we see them for who we think they could be, yeah. not for who they are. And even they think they are a certain way. But when they get to office, there are politics and sub and, and, and intentions at play that yeah. they are forced. And I can imagine it's hard to be an elected official, but yeah. they're forced to make hard decisions that they can uh, wouldn't even imagine. Yeah, and so yeah, yeah. Um, they're going to disappoint people. So I tell people this all the time. Yeah. If you want to get a gold star and be treated like Beyonce, don't run for public office. Yeah. If you want to have high blood pressure, right, <laughs> and you want to be criticized, then you know but try to make some good positive change somewhere you can run for office yeah anybody I, can run for office you know but it's, yeah. it's not an easy job at I the same time uh -huh. yeah but, but at the same time i don't care if i make an elected official cry no oh, because yeah. they're working for us <laughs> i think even obama disappointed some people so yeah okay. and you know what the thing is as voters yeah. i tell people all the time i've met so many camp uh, elected officials and campaign candidates the uh -huh. thing for us so that we don't have so much heartbreak is i never put anybody on a pedestal they are not yeah. god yeah yeah okay Sorry, so, I went uh, on yeah 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 that's okay that's good i i didn't know about all this i i could imagine the pressure of being elect, an elected official yeah it's not well, a pageant yeah so um yeah so what, what are the ordinances yeah. that that they they're gonna propose and um, okay. maybe you let us know uh, a few i know that in there they have five different uh, uh items in there that they're trying to push um but uh and if you guys want to know more about the ordinances uh, and all the reference all the stuff that we're talking about right now i'll leave it in the description so you guys could go and read it for yourself awesome. and, and open up all the documents and all the reports and stuff like that um sure. yeah but yeah, I, uh, I, I can go through them if you'd like yeah yeah so if you can okay so um the first one um is uh, and i'm trying to simplify this so the first one is security deposit limitations uh -huh. so the city is proposing that um, you limit security deposits to um, limiting the amount of security deposit to equal no more than one month yeah rent amount uh -huh. and also limiting additional upfront costs and fees to equal no more than one month rent amount I want to say I'm looking at a document that is um, the an older one, so chances are it might it might have some more specific wording, but this is kind of the gist of it. Yeah. So right now, you know, the state of Minnesota doesn't have any restrictions on the amount um, that we can charge for a security deposit. Um, so that sounds good as a tenant. Yeah. Good landlords yeah, right? cannot so, uh, uh, landlords yeah, cannot charge like, me more right? than one month. So 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 but, but, yeah. yeah. So let's this do one at a time and then we could discuss it. Okay. So, so yeah, uh, so instead of us going down, uh, sure. <clears throat> but the security deposit limitation, right? Mm -hmm. to, to one month, what's wrong with that? Like, like is that, must be good for the tenants or, or what, what, what's your thought of, on that? I could see it being, if I were a renter, right? I'd be yeah. like, sweet, I only got paid one month, right? Yeah. Um, so that's a win for me, uh, but, I think um, as many of you who, who manage properties know that um, we are, I tell renters this all the time, our business is not to collect security deposit. Our business is to provide safe, 
code compliant affordable housing. Yeah. Um, and so um, we all know, you know, that we have had at least, I'll tell you an instance I had where, yeah. um, you know, I based the security deposit amount of either one month or two months uh -huh. based on the applicant and the level, the risk level. Mm -hmm. So um, when I had a renter who was, uh, you know, paid two months security deposit, it was because her credit score was below 600. Uh -huh. um, she had high collections or charge offs, uh -huh. um, but she had uh, a very uh, thorough rental history and she, you know, earned more than the minimum in income. Yeah. Um, and when I had to terminate this renter's lease, uh, because she chose to smoke in, in the unit, even though yeah. I just installed the carpet, Oh She's yeah, carpet and, and smoke don't go together. Exactly. Scrub <laughs> a carpet five times and people will know. In fact, yeah. I'm going to invite the city council members to do that. And don't know. <laughs> yeah, because I was just doing this like three weeks ago. And and maybe, so, maybe it could be, be a community service uh, uh, program. Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so, yeah. So my thing is this. So, um, you know, uh, many of us, you know, yeah, we have some great renters, right? 99% yeah. of my renters are chill. They're great. Yeah. And 99% of the owners are great. But in the 1%, this person, for example, chose to smoke in the unit without, uh, and they're not supposed to. Yeah. Uh, they chose to allow another adult to live in the unit who was not on the lease. Yeah. Um, and so uh, and they paid rent late a lot. And yeah. so when I had to get this unit back, back in shape, she, she didn't, this person did not clean the unit like they were supposed mm -hmm. to. So um, can if you can imagine, this person left in January, it's winter, nobody wants to move. So the security deposit is $2,000, right? Round yeah. numbers, $2,000. It is, they didn't pay January rent. That's yeah. another thousand. Yeah. Uh, it is uh, February, March, yeah. April, right? Yeah. And yeah. I had to use money to clean it. So yeah. I, I'm really, so I only recovered two, so, but really, yeah. You there's 4,000 4, that yeah. I have to eat. And yeah. everybody who, who runs a small business, we don't survive on tax write us alone. Anybody yeah. who says this um, has never ran a business. Yeah. So, so that's why, you know, every, you know, this is something the city doesn't understand that, that security deposit um, is not about, oh, they didn't pay rent and then they left. It's yeah. about the cleaning fees, the repair and maintenance fees. It's about the, 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 holding, the holding costs when uh, you're not able to get the unit rented for, uh, you know, one to three, maybe longer months. Yeah. Depending yeah. On yeah. So, so changing carpets, like it's already like 250 something per square feet. So if you have like, I'm assuming maybe it's around a thousand square feet. Mm -hmm. That's already like two grand. Exactly. You change the carpets out. Exactly. And, and, but the thing is, I had just put the, the carpet in and then I was yeah. thinking, am I going to just take it out? And so we had to get the carpet scrubs and use an ozone generator. And yeah. the thing is, she'd been in the unit, I think only four months. And so, yeah. you know, we had to hedge our bets because the thing is, I already know I'm not going to recover the money, right? Yeah, and yeah. we already put five or $6,000 in on painting the walls all new and new light fixtures, new locks, you yeah. know, carpet, the whole thing. Um, yeah. And so it's like, like you guys, are, so many of you know, it's about certain costs you have to try to depreciate out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though we already know it's a paper loss, we already know we had to pay for in the front end. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so, it's, so I mean, uh, that, that security, security deposit is not rent. It's just a deposit. Exactly. So if they clean the house, they get it back. So it's not yeah, a loss at all to the tenant. If, even if they yeah. have to pay more. Um, exactly. Uh, My goal is always yeah. to get as much of security deposit back as possible. Yeah. There have been times, and I'm sure many of you have done this, there have been times where I'm like, oh, you know, this person, you know, um, is a single parent, yeah. um, or this person has, you know, several children. Yeah. And I actually, when it comes to the, the invoice I send, uh, the security deposit letter I send back to them, yeah. I actually take, I actually increase the amount they get back. Yeah. So, there's actually a couple hundred that they don't even pay because, you know, I, 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 I worry about, you know, I want to make sure they have money for gas. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But why do you, why do you want to make sure that these people are okay? These tenants? Well, you know, one, I'm not mother Teresa, so, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I'm definitely not a nonprofit, but yeah. you know, 
I think so many of us, you know, I think about my, my parents and I think about my mom and mm -hmm. how she had four of us by the time she was 20 or 21. And we grew up living in a studio apartment with cockroaches. We had no yeah. bed. I did yeah. not have a bed till I was like four. I didn't have a TV till I was four. I didn't yeah. even know what a stroller was. And so, yeah. you know, for me, it's always, and I think all of us, it's always yeah. balancing your business sense, right? With your, yeah. your, your heart, you know? Yeah. And so that's, you know, um, that's, yeah, that's me, kind of why. Yeah. Yeah. Me, I grew up under section eight pretty much throughout my life until, you know, I went to college, uh, even a little mm -hmm. bit after college, but, but uh, to me, it's just good business practice. To take yeah. care of this because I get referrals from you know yeah. that that mitigates my risk when yes. I get other referrals from good tenants and I still get some calls sometimes from referrals. Same here. Yeah. yeah. So to and me, it's just good yeah. business practice. No, exactly. And and I tell people too, it's like, you know, if we we um, are generous with you know keeping our, our boundaries in mind, you know, and, and our self preservation. But if we are generous, you know, I believe in that, you know, it comes back to us, you know. Yeah. 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 Um, on the flip side, for me, anyways, uh, like if I, if if I don't get uh, from the landlord side for me, and then maybe yeah. you could comment on this. Um, if 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 I see a, a tenant that I'm gonna take that might be high risk, which I do, I do have a, a tenant that smoked, and they, they were they're very good. Uh, they they smoke outside and stuff like that. So I do mm -hmm. do two months deposit for for people that smoke. Um, if I'm not allowed to mitigate that risk through, you know, the security deposit, I mean, honestly, as a landlord, most likely I'm just going to increase the rent. So right now I'm charging them a thousand dollars for three beds, which is like way below market. Wow. Rent. That's yeah. wow. Because they've been that's good. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. They're really good. So, yeah. Uh, yeah um, so, I mean, yeah, they're, they're really good tenants. So I, I didn't want to like increase too much rent you know mm -hmm. uh, anyways a thousand dollars for three beds but if that's i have unheard of that oh, is unheard of too uh, yeah yeah, yeah, you yeah. Advertise that people are going to be texting you all the time dude <laughs> it's only because they've been here for a, a long time they're yeah. very good tenants so you have to be really good tenants guys um, no i give people discounts all the time yeah, the yeah. Is a no, right <laughs> yeah yeah so what, what i'm saying is that on the landlord side even if it, uh, you know, I'm probably going to end up increasing rent to mitigate that risk. So let's say exactly. if it's like $1,200, right, uh, that I lost from uh, uh, from not being able to charge twice the security deposit, I'm just going to make the property 1100 I mean, uh, you know, increase it by $100. Exactly, because we have to mitigate our risk. Yeah, it's just yeah. like, it's just like this. I tell people this. It's like when you go to a restaurant, right? Certain yeah. restaurants or like, uh, you know, salons or something now, because their insurance has gone up, yeah. they actually charge a 3% health or well, well, wellness surcharge now. Yeah. And so when I first saw that as a customer, I was like, what? I am not paying for that. But yeah. then I realized, right, they also have to take care of the people. They're not just serving me as a customer, but they have valuable staff, you know? So, so, so the, 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 when their insurance increases, right? Yeah. Somebody has to cover for it. And so yeah. I have to, and um, as a customer, um, I have to, I have to also make that decision too, but yeah. I understand the challenges as a small business owner, you know? So um, it's, it's them having a 3% well, wellness fee is, yeah. it's uh, not that different from us having to mitigate our, 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 our yeah. risk. So, so in, in this case, what are your thoughts about, if I'm a landlord and I were to do that to increase my rent a hundred dollars a month because I can't charge, is that a fair assessment on my side or, or do, is that to, I guess, uh, based on your experience, would you think that's uh, realistic that a landlord will be kind of forced to do that? Am I like, you mean for me as like, a, if were I to be a renter or you mean as another coming from being another, uh, a, a leasing manager? Uh, well, being a leasing manager, do you think that like maybe um, uh, another manager or another landlord might increase rent because they have to mitigate their risk? Is that, is that a reality? Is that plausible? Is that, is that possible? Yeah, yeah. It is. It is possible and it should be possible because I tell people all the time, um, you know, we're in America because it's about freedom, right? It's yeah, about choice. Yeah. And, um, you know, I always say when people, you know, I always say that it's, it's, um, I tell renters this a lot. It's a business agreement. 
If you don't yeah. like the terms, you can negotiate, right? Yeah. You can negotiate. If you don't like the service, you don't have to rent. Yeah, yeah. If you think that it's not a good fit, we don't have to rent to you. Yeah. Uh, so long as we are complying with the HUD anti-discrimination guidelines. And yeah. yeah, but a lot of people don't understand that. that. You know, what, what I see is like, even when property tax was going up too, uh, what I see is that ultimately the tenants end up paying for a lot of these costs. And you know, like I really, I rent to a lot of my family. I mean, I violated the cardinal rule of real estate investing. <laughs> or rent to, you rent to family I, friends? I, I, I rent to family. But you know, well, not like immediate family, but you know how we're, they, they moan, eh? everybody is like family and friends or extended families, you know? Now, I must not be moan. I'm like, <laughs> nope. I'm oh. like, you know what? If you want to, I tell people, you know what? If you want to see me be like boss on you, yeah, yeah. And you're not gonna, and, and you take up, and and I know, like it's like people don't. Um, I don't rent to family and friends or relatives yeah. because I tell people my relationship with them is more important than the uh, money yeah. thing. Because yeah, you know, yeah. you you know, just that you go, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. So I'm trying to, you know, keep my sanity in check. Oh, you know? okay. Well, and not all, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not all I'm my selfish. tenants are. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so you're I, good. I, I, maybe I need to hire you as a lease no. manager. <laughs> yeah. Sure, you can hire. Me. <laughs> I have to work for free though because I yeah, well yeah. I might not show up all the time because there will yeah. be months or days where I'm sick so oh that's okay you can take your yeah. take your uh, yeah yeah but what, what based on my experience so far is that a lot of these uh, costs that you know maybe these 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 regulation costs end up being uh, burdening the 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 tenants and you know uh, to me I don't want to me if it's an idea where I want to charge the minimum that I can to my tenants and still make the yeah. Yeah, size a, a fair profit to to do the work, you know, because it does take a lot of work. It does take a lot of risk. Um, and to uh, to me, I see it as like us trying to clean up our community too, you know, to to mm -hmm. re uh, you know re renovate all these properties uh, within our community, right? Okay, so we'll go. What's the next? Uh, what's the other sure. ordinance that you know? Uh, sure, I'm gonna um. Yeah. I'm looking at my laptop, so I'm gonna kind of um, scroll here. So, uh, a second ordinance is um, tenant screening guidelines. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to read it more from like verbatim from the city, just so I don't um, misspeak. But basically, the tenant screening guideline is to um, specify the type of types of criminal history, uh -huh. um and eviction look back periods. Um, saying that um, eliminating the use of just a credit score uh -huh. um, when when um, when when people are applying, um, and so I'm going to scroll down and take a look at this. Um, they're wanting us when we when we screen applicants to not consider any crimes uh, that are no longer illegal in the state of Minnesota. Uh -huh. No um, okay. prior arrest that did not lead to a conviction, mm -hmm. um, or charges that, that that did not lead lead to a conviction. Um, traffic crimes, petty misdemeanors, misdemeanors and gross misdemeanors. I don't even know what that means. Uh, you know how <coughs> that is, and specific felony level crimes. And so, what they're trying to say is that um, uh, you know, basically they want us to be to to have to rent to people with um you know uh, a criminal history <coughs> a wider yeah. you know background in terms of criminal history another thing that they talk about too is eviction uh they're saying that they want to limit the look back period on eviction actions yeah. i don't have in this document a specific amount of years but you know i know that sometimes some um some housing providers say no evictions ever, right? Yeah, yeah. But they want to change it so that we, that so that folks who who had that restriction or ha had that requirement would have to would not be able to to do that. Yeah, um, so I think here is three years. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Thank, okay. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for pulling up the the more specific uh, details. And then uh, another thing too is that the impact of credit scores. And so they're trying to say that they want. Uh, that we can't uh, deny somebody just based on a credit score. You know, that somebody had a credit score 500. Yeah, that yeah. they want us to look at the content, uh, the, the credit history. Mm -hmm. And the, 
I have to say the interesting thing is, I don't think they realize that a lot of us do this already, right? Yeah, yeah, I do because that. So many, you're right, right? Because so yeah. many of us are, are mom and pop operations. Yeah. Um, you know, we spend a lot more time. I mean, I can speak for myself that um, I'm willing to look at somebody's credit report because mm -hmm. I understand the content. Everybody, you and I could have the same credit score, right? Yeah. But if I look at the content, you might have student loans, medical bills. Yeah. I might just have bought thousands and dollars thousands of dollars of, of shoes right so yeah. it's um but but um uh they want to make that a, a punitive thing so that we have to follow that yeah yeah so so basically some uh, uh the regulation is that you cannot use evictions against somebody the, the, not, I think there's a look there's a look back period so yeah if, if, if what you're looking at the um the updated um ordinances now is that yeah if it's only three years for example yeah. then we can't um we, we can't go beyond like oh seven years you have an eviction we still have yeah. to we still have to ex uh we can't deny that person yeah 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 that that's on the eviction side but to me when mm -hmm. i look at this i'm concerned about like you know the criminal evictions right can you tell me more about that the criminal evictions tell well, me more about the the the, the Conviction of uh, misdemeanors or gross misdemeanor oh, offenses. Oh, conviction, not eviction. Sorry. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, conviction. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. I misheard. Uh huh. Yeah. Can you tell me more about that? Or oh, well, yeah. this says you can't. Uh, so it's the criminal history thing. Like mm -hmm. I did, I denied tenants, or I deny applicants. Uh, you know, or uh, you know, based on some of these uh, criminal history too, mm -hmm. because to me, I want it. I guess, I mean, I'm in a fourplex, so, you know, I have, like, people, uh, my tenants, sometimes they work late and stuff like that, and the mom will be home. So I wanted, yeah. uh, basically, I want tenants that don't have uh, his, uh, criminal history, because I wanted to kind of create a safe environment for, for my tenants. On top of that, I still live in one of the units, so. Yeah, yeah. You know, right? Well, if I, if, I, if I can be more clear, if I can add to this, yeah. um, and this is on, um, there's an updated, uh, very detailed um, ordinance, and yep. it's. Um, I know that you'll post it for folks, but yeah, yeah, it talks it. about um, right now any criminal conviction for the for um, first degree assault, um, aggravated robbery, first degree murder, second degree murder, third degree murder, manslaughter, uh, et cetera, kidnapping, first degree criminal se sexual conduct. Um, it can't be you can't deny somebody who um the sentences um or are older than 10 years yeah so in theory somebody could serve a 10-year term come yeah. out yeah. and you and if they you know are first come first serve right yeah you cannot deny them based on that yeah. so so yeah. you know there's a lot of wording here that i think will be so important for folks to really hone in on to yeah. look at the difference between sentencing is sentencing versus yeah. release to two totally different things you can be sentenced for 10 years or you could have been released 10 years ago i mean there's there's um so maybe genuine. so maybe we should have like the sponsor city council to come and explain all these things Since i think so the bill or, or the <laughs> ordinance right yeah but i, I but I, I i think that you know um i think that uh in my opinion yeah. It would be helpful to have somebody who, um, how do I say this, supervises them. Yeah, yeah. Oh. You know, who, who's able to ask very point, pointed questions. Yeah. But because in, you know, just looking at all the wording, I mean, the fact that the ordinances are called tenant protection ordinances. Yeah. Right? So if they're protecting the, the tenants, who are they protecting the tenants against? If the city is saying we are a city, right? Mayor is saying the city is a city that works for everyone. Yeah. Who is everyone? Because we we are part of everyone. And if these ordinances are about um, making it better for everybody, then why are they called tenant protections? Why yeah. are they not, why are they not called? Um, you know, well, if they're called that, what is something that is equitable, that is also equal, that also helps us? Yeah. And yeah. I'm not talking about the city's 4d program and random things okay. i'm talking about ordinances that also protect us right yeah, there's nothing yeah. com com um, comparable yeah 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 
Uh, yeah, uh, uh, to me, just this uh, uh, criminal uh, background check stuff is really important to me. So, uh, because to me, I still live in the units. Uh, yeah. um, and, you know, uh, I want to be able to, <coughs> now granted these, uh, uh, you know, maybe, a, uh, maybe someone uh, has already been to prison, maybe they pay their dues, their debt to society, you know, they, they should deserve a second chance. But I think there's, you know, a right, they, they, they mm -hmm. um, and so if everybody denies them because of, of, of uh, uh, you know, prior, prior convictions that happened to them, I don't think that's fair, but I think there's other ways to go around it. You know, I think there's programs you could put in place. Um, well, you know, I was the, the funny thing is you, you said that in the Wilder Foundation, the city has been going back to this report by the Wilder Foundation, uh -huh. and they've been using this as evidence for their ordinances, but the Wilder Foundation has a report um, and it talks about the criminal's background, criminal background's impact on housing success. Mm -hmm. And they keep using this as a reason to, to, to um, why they have this proposed ordinance. But mm -hmm. what they don't understand is that Wilder's, found, uh, Wilder's report here talks about um, the fact that, um, you know, folks with criminal backgrounds, uh, a criminal background, um, you know, is able to do well in housing, but that's only because the housing is supportive housing that yeah. has wraparound nonprofit services, yeah, and we yeah. don't. And so they're putting this this report onto us uh, when they have not made it clear that this should only be applied to supportive housing services that have wraparound re resources. Yeah, you know, so we are not supportive houses. Yeah, so <laughs> like like me, I'm, I don't specialize in that, right? No, so I don't, don't have the resources to help, like are convicted uh, community members that, you know, have paid their debt to society, trying to get their second chance. But if, if mm -hmm. I'm their landlord, essentially in terms of housing, I'm not doing them any good because I don't have the resources to help them. Exactly, exactly. Right? And, um, and um, you know, there's evidence that talks about, um, you know, they they uh they talk about even with the HUD there's an updated HUD report and I can get that to you. They talk about you know that there's a high court. Uh, this is real data with with mm -hmm. real um, re re research saying that um, you know the higher level um, of a criminal record, it, somebody with a higher level criminal record is also 300 percent more likely to have an eviction record. Yeah. So. The city doesn't understand that a lot of this goes hand in hand. Is it unfortunate that it goes hand in hand? Yes, but are we the saviors to 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 dismantle this? No. Well, we are, we're not providers. the saviors because we're not equipped. So that's no, what, we're not equipped. That's like asking like uh, we don't provide uh, houses. We don't provide counseling. Yeah, yeah. That's like asking someone that doesn't understand like heart surgery to become a heart surgeon. Exactly. Right. It does, exactly. It, and that's, yeah, that's you like me get, telling, yeah, yeah uh -huh. it, you know, we, we have our specific set, set of skills and they need to realize that we are not a wraparound nonprofit service. Yeah, yeah. We are here to provide code compliant, safe housing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if there's a program out there, uh, if they make the entry easier for other landlords that want to do this work, I yes, think it, yes. it's and that's choice. very helpful. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and that's Again, for me, it always comes down to choice. That if you, for example, you choose to have more, uh, let's say, flexible, right? Yeah. Screening guidelines, and your renters are are, are you know higher risk. Yeah. I, I I welcome that because that is your choice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so there's still I think two more uh, uh items sure. on there, but I think we're at the hour already. So I sure. think uh what I would like to do is maybe if people are more interested in it. I'll let you talk briefly about it, but we're not going to go into sure. our uh, detail, uh, specific details yep. on it. I'll, if, I'll cover the three. Really it, and if people, yeah, are more, I, if people are interested in this, you know, maybe we could do another uh, segment uh, to, to dive more into details and give examples and, and you know, maybe yeah. even get, you know, uh, the, some of the authors of this ordinance to come and discuss with our community too, because we're not, I think we're all trying to solve the same issue, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 landlords are not like these, uh, you know, slumlords that don't care about tenants. I think we all care about our community. Ninety-nine percent of us tenants. do. We're in the business for the right yeah. reason. And we've been tenants ourselves. Yes. You know? so, yes. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and briefly run okay. through the I'll other two. I'll go through it. Yeah. 
Yeah. So the last three ordinances. Um, so three, yeah. One is tenant rights and responsibilities information. So mm -hmm. basically, the city would require that you know any kind of packet of uh, you know um, city ordinances, state laws, federal laws around housing mm -hmm. that we have to give that to um, every renter, yeah. um, and that we you know basically we have to review it with them. Um, and this thing, um, you know, I'm very concerned around, about because it's around comp compelled speech. And basically, you know, what my understanding of compelled speech is that, um, you know, government cannot force us via law to, 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 to um, give speech on their behalf. Yeah. They, get, they can't force that and make it punitive. They can suggest it, but, but um, they can't do that, especially when we're conducting private business. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, you guys, come on. How many times have you told a renter to read a lease agreement? Yeah. If they don't even read a re lease agreement, what does the city think that they're going to read the attorney uh, general, the state attorney general's handbook? Yeah, okay, yeah. just cause notice. Just cause notice is that when you, when if you don't want to renew a lease, right, the lease term is up, yeah. you have to give, I think, one out of nine reasons. You, they, you have to tell them. Um, and the thing is that a lot of times what I see is that, um, we, um, you know, we have situations where we live in the same unit, right? With a renter yeah. or the renter has become increasingly hostile. And yeah. so for the safety of ourselves and of the other renters, sometimes we have to just, just keep it very brief and say, thank you so much for your lease is not being renewed. Yeah. And what the city doesn't understand is that by the time we keep this, the communication to a minimum is that the renter already has had several lease violations, right? Yeah, yeah. And then the last thing is this. That one's kind of weird. Me. That one's kind of weird to me. Yeah. It's kind of like you want auto um, renewal. So then if, yeah. if, if it's set an auto renewal, why have a contract in the first place? Exactly. And that's because the city <laughs> has never managed uh, units like us, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the last thing is this, advanced notice of sale. So, um, you know, mortgage brokers, real estate agents, you guys are going to know, or this is going to be your, th your, your thing. So basically, if, uh, if I am selling a building to you two, I have to give 90 days uh, notice of intent to sell yeah. to the city and to the renters. Now, if you want to buy from me, and I'm trying to um, simplify this for the sake of time, that if you want to, uh, you can't. Uh, I, I can't eat, uh, you know, end the, the, the lease, the lease for the renters. So they have, they have to at least be able to stay on that property after you acquire it for at least, um, at least, um, I believe uh, 90 days. Yeah. Now, if you say, Hey, um, you know, I want, I have to, uh, I can't, they can't stay there more than 90 days. Then you have to pay for their relocation costs. Yeah. Um, this is, doesn't say anything about 1031 exchange. Uh, however, in the city in Minneapolis, they were able to have an exemption for 1031 exchanges. Um, so well, yeah, that that's kind of the rest of the ordinances yeah. in a nutshell. Yeah, I'm a I'm I'm also a licensed real estate agent here in St. Paul or here in Minnesota, and so yeah, this this 90 day notice I think is really going to slow down, you know, transactions. Um, yeah. And and then uh, with that, uh, with slow down of transaction, property prices are going to drop. That's just the economics. Um, also, if, if there's a 90-day burden on a, a buyer, then the buyer's going to deduct that from the purchase price. Exactly. Yeah, that's the economics of it. So, and, uh, and I realize that we understand the economics, right? So we yeah. know, know oranges and they're talking apples. Yeah. And we refuse to realize that uh, they, I don't think they see their blind spots. So. Yeah. Um, well, we're part of the community too, so it's not up to them uh, alone. Um, and it, it, if we see something that's not right, you know, um, it's it's you know we should take some advice uh, advice to them as well. Uh, let me see. Um, I know that we can't go through all the details. We're sort of towards the end of of, of this already. So, um, mm -hmm. and we'll come back if people want to know more about it. But I'll put all the content, the resources that we talked about uh, 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 today in the descriptions and uh, people could go and, and look at that uh let me see so at so with uh, with these ordinances 
what's your what's what's sort of your uh uh general um uh opinion on it is it good or bad for the tenants and landlords or you know you know i or I'm, like, trying not, yeah, 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 I'm, not, so. I'm, I'm trying not to um i think it's very complicated uh -huh. i think that um you know no matter what these ordinances there or some version of it is going to try to pass and um there's going to be repercussions uh -huh. and the repercussions at the end of the day are gonna are gonna affect the 99 percent of great renters you know people who we all know uh that that, that are out there and many of our our, our, our renters mm -hmm. and it's going to be uh, a trickle down effect and um that'll be that that's something that the city will have to deal with yeah. um and so um i try not to look at it as good or bad because you know it all depends on who right where it's coming from but i know that th there there's consequences so the consequences are uh you know seattle is barely uh is starting to realize that there was a study by the University of Washington, um, you know, looking at the unintended consequences. Uh -huh. And what I've what what we've been telling the city is that there is not enough research to look at the unintended consequences. And uh -huh. so you are moving forward with ordinances that you don't you can't even fathom the yeah. unintended consequences. Mm -hmm. um, and so I know that we have limited control over what yeah. the city chooses to do, but I know what we do have control over is. Um, how uh, we uh, market our properties um, and how we'll find workarounds yeah. um, to deal with these ordinances. Okay, so so then what's next? If, if someone wants to, you know, voice their opinion or you know they want to maybe uh, help you guys out, uh, you know, to to talk to to the uh, city council and stuff like that, what what can they do? Do do you have any resources for them? Yes. So the first thing is. Um, you guys can text me uh -huh. at two at two three four four oh five zero zero eight five and I'll uh -huh. send you a link to our um our um uh private Facebook group. Okay. Um, that yeah. way you can connect to other folks. There's about four hundred of us there. Uh -huh. Um and within that, um I'm asking we have some very specific requests, which uh -huh. is the first one is um pinned at the top of our Facebook group posts is the the ordinance uh the city needs comments very detailed comments and feedback i mean you could literally highlight and comment something and say this sucks but yeah. um you know however you want to say it but they need your 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 feedback because uh -huh. we only have three or four more weeks and it goes to a vote yeah so we're in a very short timeline so that's the most tangible thing you can do a wait how many more weeks to a vote three three or four wait, Unless but it, but some of these, yeah, 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 three or four weeks, right? So with, exactly. uh, with less than a month, but some of these uh, city councils didn't even know about this. Exactly. And you know That's what, you guys, weird. if you want, you can call your city council member and say, man, how come the St. Paul mom and pop shop read these ordinances before you did? Yeah. yeah. Yet you are in a position to make a decision on it in less than a month yeah yeah so you guys can ask that question okay. so but the biggest ask right now the biggest uh, request i have for you guys is to go in and comment and be yeah. very very comb through the ordinance and be as type a as you need to be if there's yeah. a word that bothers you comment on that exact word uh -huh. um, another thing besides com you know calling your co city council members is um coming to the public hearing yeah so they just did the first uh public meeting today they're going to do the second one and then the third one is a public hearing that's uh -huh. when in, and i think about two or three weeks and we're going to be posting that but we need you guys physically to be there it cannot be five or ten of us it needs to be 50. it needs to be a hundred people um and we need bodies in the room yeah so public also, hearing public hearing is yeah. when the city council meet to discuss it but you're allowed to have public statements from yep, to give statements yep. individuals and, yeah. Yep, and and I, you know, they have a time limit on the public hearing, but if we can organize it where folks show up and we organize it, and we we have certain people who are going to have a statement and they have like a minute or something. Yeah. Now we can we can consciously choose people who who are who show the diverse range in terms yeah. of our our age, race, you uh -huh. know, experience level of properties, and to give a statement. Okay. And then the fourth is when they do a vote. Yeah. Okay. 
So that's the most tangible thing. Um, there's like other things that are coming up that we have in our back pocket. Yeah. Um, well, um, so then if people are interested, you know? yeah, people are interested, reach out to you, be part of the Facebook group. Uh, I would say go to the public hearing, whether you're for or against this. If you read Shut it, up. and let's say you're for this ordinance, then go speak your yeah, voice. Yeah. yeah, and you know, and that's okay too, you know, because yeah. I think that, you know, at the root of this, you know, we need to have a healthy democracy, and I think it's yeah. okay to disagree. Yeah. Uh, but the thing that I think we should not do is not share, uh, is not voice our our opinion. So yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so join our group, um, give very clear comment and feedback. Even if you don't have a comment on every ordinance, you know, you can focus on one that 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 you're particularly concerned about. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the last thing is. The most besides a comment the most biggest thing is comment and show up at the public hearing but okay. you have to come to our group so text yeah. me and i will send you the link so you yeah. can be part of our group okay. okay and i'll put the uh do you want me to put maybe i'll put the link on there too if you want me to put yes that'd be great i would appreciate it. I, okay. and yeah I, I would appreciate that and also uh, my um, um um phone number okay yeah i'll do that um Lastly, usually I leave a segment for questions, uh, but I think we answered a lot of questions and, and stuff already. If there's any questions that I, you know, we couldn't answer, um, Sandy and I will go back and we'll, we'll try to answer those questions, uh, reply to those questions uh, for you guys. Uh, so we're not gonna have that segment this time around, but uh, in closing, uh, you, so you're sort of in the, the unique position, like we said earlier, uh, you know, you came from, you know, the community organization um, community, and then now you're part of an investor's community, right? So mm -hmm. you're, doing, you're, you're sort of on both sides. So if city council members ask you to advise them, what's the, what's a, what's the advice that you could give them? Uh, and they will leave it at your advice for, if, if they ask you, well, what, what's your advice for them? I would say straight up though, first, don't bullshit me. Because if you ask me my advice, you better implement it. Okay. All right, I don't so, like lip service. Yeah, so assume they don't. They genuinely need your advice. So they're like, mm -hmm. Sandy and Moore, you gotta be our advisor. Please let me know what's, you know, what's your advice on this ordinance? What, what, what would you say to them? Well, well, okay, what would I say yeah. to them is, yeah. they need to go back to the drawing board and get, compre build a comprehensive, long-term uh, relationships with, an, uh, uh, a range of St. Paul taxpayers and constituents that are not just renters and not, you know, that are a range of us, renters, you know, property um, uh, owners and managers, uh, because uh, we really need a fair sample size of us all at the table. Um, and I can't do the work that I wanna do if it's mainly all just people who look like me and no renters, or if it's all renters, and there's none, none, uh, none uh, no people who look like me. So they really need to put uh, an honest effort into displaying, into, into creating true equity. And that starts with representation. Yeah, okay. So that's great. Uh, I do have a comment on that, but I won't comment. We'll leave it at what you Why said. Why not? <laughs> oh, you want me to comment? Yes, please do. Okay, my comment is that if you go back, and you, you try your best to go out and outreach with the community and you have no participants, that means it's not a big problem. So don't waste your resource on that. You know? Well, then, <laughs> Just, uh, well, because we, like, we have potholes to fill, we have like so many other things to do in our community. Like use that time and resource to go to something that people want you to fix. So if, if you try, if you do your honest work and you try to go to every single person and they don't want to discuss it with you, uh, that means it's not a, it's not that big of a deal for the majority of that population. That's just, yeah, that's yeah. Just, and no, no. And, and, and I want to say one more thing in response to that. I mean, it's clear to us, right? And the city is starting to realize this. I think Guy Tao's aide had a aha moment, which right. was 99% of uh, housing providers, folks like us. Mm -hmm. There's so many of us who are mom or pop, uh, mom and pop owners, where yeah. we are operating it directly. Um, our livelihood is, is on this. We are not earning a lot of money. In fact, I have a renter who didn't pay rent who earns like 50% more than I do. Um, yeah. And so they're starting to realize that um, 
that uh, we should have been at the table. Um, and um, they realized that, you know, a lot of the issues that come up are from 1%, 1% of renters who have, uh, you know, a lot of evictions, who have a heavy criminal history. Um, and 1% of pop and pop and, and the 1% of, of, of anything that comes from owners are the 1% of you. Uh, we all know somebody who should not be operating, who should not be owning um, yeah. um, uh, yeah. rental properties, right? So there's yeah. that 1%. The outliers. Yeah, yep, the outliers. But unfortunately, <coughs> the outliers are the squeaky wheels. So they get heard, right? Yeah. And so I think it's an opportunity for us, the 99%, whether we are renters or, or housing providers, to 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 step up so that we are heard so that there's no more instances of ordinances that are punitive that are going to punish the 99 percent of us just because there's the one percent of us i think you're wrong about the one percent it's like one tenth of a percent well yes we're even more right but if i think, <laughs> so, but if I, I'm really talking, yeah, if I think, yeah. if I think one tenth then statistically it's very negligible yeah. right yeah 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 so exactly. it's one percent yeah yeah okay yeah for all, uh, we'll, for all the stats people out there yeah, yeah yeah so that's great we'll leave it at that i'll leave your information on there uh i hope that the city council members hear um some of the voices i look at some of the comments there were a lot of against comments on their page um mm -hmm. and they should read that because it's on their website so um yeah i hope that uh you know uh there's a, a solution that could come off of this so uh, I applaud the hard work that you guys put in, uh, not just for this ordinance, but you know, to provide safe and uh, um, affordable housing for our community members. You know. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, you know, I appreciate all the folks in this 400 plus group. There's a core group of us who were all volunteers, and uh -huh. um, you know, I appreciate all of the the, the diverse voices, and um, I think that. Um, this is an example for us to to stick together and to look out for each other uh, when it comes to state and city and federal laws uh, yeah. that will be coming down the the, the pipe. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah. So thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate that oh. opportunity to speak. Yeah, no problem. Uh, with that said, uh, thank you, you guys, all of you guys for hanging in there. I think we've got a lot of great information here, uh, and so uh, we'll see you guys at the next show, right? All right, you guys, join a join a group. Give me a text. Yeah. All right, thanks. Okay. I'll see you guys. All right, thank you. Okay, bye-bye.